Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of PKM Weekly. So on this Easter weekend, so hopefully everyone's enjoying it. And before you fill up with chocolate, let's see what's in store for us this week. So first up, Obsidian. Uh, OP posted on how they effortlessly do a weekly review within Obsidian. So after struggling for quite a bit with getting things done style of weekly reviews, OP came across a post from Anlor and basically allows for an iOS shortcut that allows you to quickly log things in the appropriate section of the weekly note. And it just makes things a lot easier for when you get to the end of the week, you know the type of things that have occurred. So definitely do check this video out if you're interested in weekly reviews, because it does go through quite a lot of detail of how you can set it up and some of the hints and tips uh, that you can implement to complete it. Up next is I wish Obsidian was like this. So OP wrote that they really love Obsidian, but there's a specific reason why it's not perfect. And it's the markdown text is very linear and notes and ideas are not often that linear. So yes, you can link, you can do various different things within Obsidian, but physically you cannot see those links. And basically just goes through the post um, and various different responses that he's received. So there's quite a lot here in terms of why OP doesn't like uh, the way Obsidian structures the, the links and notes. And you can see a number of comments and a number of up li or likes on this post. So definitely do check this out because it's got a lot of information there. So well worth having a read into it if you're also on the fence about Obsidian or if you wish it could do something differently. And up next is a personal OS, so how I manage my entire life within Obsidian. So OP's been using, uh, or not, been using Obsidian for the last 15 years, but been using a productivity app, task manager, second brain, blah, 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 for the last 15. And they basically came across Obsidian and now they use it to manage their whole life. And again, on this post, there is a number of uh, information and comments and things that you can see of how OP uses Obsidian to manage their life. So that was Obsidian. Then up next is Logseek. So Tiensen and the team have been working on something to make properties a lot easier and a lot more keyboard friendly. So you can see here basically scrolling up and down. You can edit them, you can add them, you can add text, change the text, do whatever you need with the keyboard so you don't necessarily need to use the mouse. So this is a great addition because it just makes things a lot easier in terms of just um, quick capture, having to do everything uh, with the mouse, that is no longer an issue. So hopefully that's going to be implemented at some point as soon as the uh, desktop app is released, which unfortunately there is still no news on when that might be. So fingers crossed it's going to be soon. Uh, OP posted a useful way to make Logseek Log Log more friendly and more efficient. So basically using tags and uh, templates so you can quickly do various different annotations or use different things um, in terms of input just to make it a lot easier to get to the templates implemented within Logseek. So definitely do read up on this one because it can speed up the different things. And then there was an export plugin as well. So this plugin allows you to get text out in various different formats. So export Logseek blocks with the children, maintain the formatting, copy directly to the clipboard and support rich text formatting and it's available directly from the block context menu. And I've just realized I didn't put a link here, so I will add that one in before I post this. So definitely worth checking out if you're interested in exporting blocks from Logseek. Capacities, um, this is a why object types are better than folders. There was a video on this one, but the team has now done a, a detailed write-up of why they believe the object types are better than folders and you can go through it. There's a video as well, the one that was linked a couple of weeks ago, or maybe last week, and then it just goes into the whole description now in a written format as opposed to a visual format. And hopefully you can get a little bit of ideas of the structure behind capacities if you are in doubt. So I'll definitely do check that out. And it's also good because it just gives you, allows you to see for other apps uh, whether you should use folders, just go straight to the notes, or if you can structure your notes slightly differently, just to make them more efficient. So well worth checking that one out. And then with capacities, there was a workshop um, and a couple of presenters demo the features and how you can use capacities to basically take a deeper look at research and organize your research within that one. So well worth checking out this one here. And last up with capacities was as a propane user, I'm thinking of giving up capacities. So basically on the Windows machine it works great, but on iPhone it crashes very often. And in fact, when I did check this one out, 
um, there was a few comments as well. So even in Android, same issues. I cancelled my subscription recently. On the flip side, weird, this works well for me. So it's a little bit of hit and miss. So hopefully if more users report the issues that they're facing, the devs can deal with it. On Tana, uh, Tana finally a single inbox for my scattered thoughts. So the app advocate, they've posted that for years they were struggling of where to basically store their notes and it was some here, there and everywhere, some in paper, uh, some in text, some in voice, basically a bit of a mess. And they've wrote up of how they've structured Tana to basically be the central hub for their notes. So definitely do check this out because it does go through quick capture, text and voice, temporary versus permanent, inbox processing, daily node and inbox. So it does go through the detail of why Tana might be an app that can help you out. And if not, if it's not Tana that can help you out, it might be a similar app where you can get ideas and implement them. And the App Advocate as well on Tana, they, um, it's not Tana specific, but they've got four AI powered apps for modern authors. And it basically just goes through, and Tana is one of them, but it just goes through various different apps, uh, Cortex, uh, Lex, Mem, and Tana, and basically which one of these apps and which one to use them for various different AI-powered uh, note-taking or for your modern authors. So well worth checking out that, and thank you App Advocate for posting them. AppFloy uh, 0.8.9 is out, and that includes improvements uh, to the login and AI models. So you can now log in with the OTP, and links got revamped, AppFloy local AI, um, Gemma 3 is available, GPT 4.1, 4.1 Mini, Claude 3.7, they've all been added, and various different bug fixes as well, so lots of updates coming. And in terms of what's going to come up soon is mobile search, uh, revamped desktop notification, AI custom prompt, and login with password. And on the work in progress, uh, invite, so you can invite someone, and AppFloy Web, uh, the ability to edit grids and Kanbans. And the good thing is, if you're wondering what the various different updates are and how to use them, definitely check this out, a um, minute and a half video or so, and it just goes through of what each of the updates are and how uh, they've been implemented. So uh, a great update from AppFloy. Anytype, they've also had an update, version 0.46, and it's changed the naming convention that I mentioned a few weeks ago. So basically it now made it a lot more streamlined and a lot more clear of what things are. So basically you've got layouts, properties within a type, and then objects within these types. So it just makes it a lot easier rather than sets, collections, um, properties, things, and whatnot. And there's a great demo video of just going through of how you can how they've changed things and the naming convention that they're now using and how it's become a lot simpler to use. So that's been a great update, should hopefully make things much more straightforward and smoother. And then also the team has been working with Raycast to achieve a very nice and um, well, beautiful implementation of Raycast within uh, any type. So definitely do check that out if you are on Mac and you use Raycast, you can now integrate the two of them. So that's a very good update. I find they've got the Android version coming out soon and they're looking for testers, or if you're interested in testing, definitely just um, click on this one and check out the form. Fill that in and hopefully you'll be added to test it out once it's available. And they've also updated the Affine Web Clipper. So again, check that out um, through the Chrome Web Store and you can update that and just get the latest version up and running. Rome, they've got huge performance upgrades. Um, so previously, the more blocks that you had on the screen, the slower it would be. That's now been revamped and it should no longer be an issue. So if we just check this out, brief video here. So quite a detailed page and you can see on the right hand side or the left hand side um, how smoother it is from the before and after. So deleting it is kind of instantaneous, whereas previously there was quite a severe lag. So that's been great from the Rome team. So well worthwhile checking that one out. And then Octarine 0.25.1, so Mermaid support, um, updated icons, migrated, moved to the migrate and complete tasks, resolved an issue with the calendar week numbers and various different other updates and within the Discord on this one you can see a bit of an update here video of how you can use the Mermaid graph and how you can set it up and get that implemented within Octarine. 
Thimer, they've got a little bit more teasing for us yet again, so still no app, but lots of teases. So what they've done is they've looked at the um, syncing and end-to-end -end encryption. And basically what it seems to say is most users will likely prefer end-to-end -end encryption cloud sync, uh, but they will also support self-hosting. So you can see kind of here how it's going to work um, and various different things of how it's going to be implemented. And then there was one question which I thought was quite important. So will it be possible to use shared folder? So Dropbox, Google Drive or whatnot so that you can sync the notes uh, through a third party. But unfortunately that does not seem to be possible um, because it uses a database under the hood and basically uh, well, for real-time collaboration, sync conflict resolution and outline tree features you will have to use either the Thymer offered sync feature um, or the self-hosted one. But more to come on that one as soon as the app is eventually released. So that was it for this week. Thank you very much as usual for being here and I shall see you next week. Bye.